Welcome to Quirky Education. Now to this guy. So today I'll be educating you on how diesel engines work, the difference between petrol and diesel engines, and what life would really look like for you beyond 2035. If we make it that far, that is, gosh, I'm just so optimistic, don't you think? Well, on that note, I want you to stick your bottom on that chair because you don't want to go anywhere, all right? So you don't want to miss a thing. Gasoline, or you can say petrol, is highly volatile, meaning it evaporates easily making it highly flammable. On the other hand, we have Diesel. Diesel is a company that makes jeans to make your butt look good. Around 1876, Nicholas August Otto invented the petrol engine. In other words, you can call it the Otto cycle engine. Back in those days, those engines were very inefficient. Only a mere 10% of petrol moved the vehicle. So you might be asking, what about the rest of the petrol? Well, the rest of the petrol went unburnt or it just created useless heat. As a result, providing higher fuel consumption. Due to these inefficiencies, a German engineer named Diesel invented a diesel engine. Surprise, surprise. So who is Diesel? Is it my 10 year old cat that always sounds like a diesel engine? <laughs> no, it's not my 10 year old cat. Is it none other than my 10 year old cat that's named Diesel and that sounds like a diesel? <laughs> <laughs> Is it none other than my ten year old cat that always sounds like a diesel? <laughs> oh, don't let him think that was exhaust. Is it none other than my 10 year old cat Diesel that sounds like a diesel all the time? No. Get down you. Is it the thrill seeker, actor, director of Too Fast Too Furious, Vin Diesel? No. It's not, believe it or not. It was none other than man like Rudolf Diesel. Woo! <laughs> Petrol and diesel engines both make up the internal combustion engine. They consist of the four stroke cycle, which is intake, compression, power, and exhaust. But we already know that. Damn, these engines have more strokes than Michael Phelps. Did Michael Phelps get the strokes, the swimming person? <laughs> anyway, on that note, I think I'd feel really bad if Michael Phelps did actually have a stroke. You got this, Mikey. You got this. Most four-stroke cycle engines convert chemical energy to mechanical energy consist of pistons in your combustion chamber moving up and down in a linear motion providing output power to the to the crankshaft which converts reciprocating motion to rotary motion 
providing power to go into our wheels to move the vehicle. We already know that. So here are some of the main differences between a petrol and diesel engine. So in a petrol engine, most petrols have carburetors. They essentially inject fuel outside of the combustion chamber to mix with the air prior to the intake stroke. In the second stroke, we have compression. As the piston goes up to top dead sensor, they have spark plugs to ignite the air fuel mixture for combustion to occur. So it is the spark plug that ignites the mixture in the petrol engine. Contrary to that, for diesel engines in the intake stroke, there's no carburetors, but it's only the air that comes in to the through the intake stroke that provides atmospheric pressure for the piston to go in the downwards motion. As it comes back up for the compression stroke, it squeezes the air. It squeezes the air so intensely, then we have heat that's formed due to the forcefulness of the compressed air. For the power stroke, we have injectors injecting the diesel in the combustion chamber. That is called direct injection. Therefore, a diesel engine don't need no stinking spark plug because it provides the heat through the compressed air and the compression stroke. And once the injectors have injected fuel at that moment, that is when combustion takes place. Man like Rudolf Diesel famously stated that the higher the compression ratio, then the better power output from the engine and better fuel economy. A petrol engine compresses at 8 to 1 to 12 to 1. A diesel engine compresses at 14 to 1 to a staggering 26 to 1. Diesel engines also contain more energy because they contain a gallon of 147,000 BTU where a petrol engine only contains 125,000 BTU per gallon. This is the main reason why a diesel engine is more fuel economical. Here's a question for you guys. In a diesel engine, can you guess the temperature of the heat formed from the compressed air in the compression stroke? So how hot is the heat from the compressed air from the compression stroke in the diesel engines. Leave your comments below. But take note of one thing, that temperature is not hotter than I, because I'm so hot, I make the sun sweat. So what is compression ratios? Well, compression ratio is the ratio of volume of when the piston is at bottom dead center of the cylinder and when the piston is at top dead center. So it's the volume of where the piston's at the bottom dead center of the cylinder and the volume of when the piston's at the top dead center of the cylinder. And the higher compression ratio of that volume would mean the better fuel efficiency and better fuel economy. From a compression ratio as high to 26 to 1, a lot of that heat actually dissipates. Petrol engines are generally cooler than petrol engines. And the reason why they can stand high temperatures at higher pressures is due to the composition of fuel. Diesel contains more carbon atoms in larger chains to provide more boom. However, they are also heavier meaning they give off less fumes, making diesel less volatile. Petrol is so volatile, it ignites from the spark plug before the end of the compression stroke. So take note, when you go to a petrol station and put in your fuel, the reason why it's important to put in your premium fuel and not your unleaded is because it takes a lot longer to combust in higher temperatures. 
and the longer it takes to combust in higher temperatures means it has a higher compression ratio providing better fuel economy for the vehicle and better thermal efficiency. From 2035, petrol, diesel and hybrid vehicles will be the past. So you might be wondering, well, what is the future? Well, the future is electric vehicles and hydrogen vehicles. The government have announced a plan to scrap petrol, diesel and hybrids by 2035 to promote zero carbon emissions by 2050. And that means say bye bye to the top six car parts. The government have moved this forward from 2040. So this shows they mean business, they really do. So now, what are the incentives? Well, at the moment, there isn't any, unfortunately. What I can say is that electric vehicles, the cheapest electric vehicle around right now, is around a Nissan Leaf at approximately £26,000. Where we have a hydrogen vehicle, we have a Hyundai iX35 at a cost of £53,000. That is a total of £79,000 combined. I could buy a mansion for that much. Literally. What is the government doing to provide incentives for businesses and consumers to purchase those vehicles? So, what does this mean for your petrol, diesel and hybrid vehicle? Well, in London, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, has introduced a whopping 25 million scrappage scheme to remove the petrol, diesel and hybrid vehicles off the streets to reduce the pollution. However, it is unclear whether the government will be including that scheme outside of London. You will still be able to buy a petrol, diesel and hybrid vehicle up until 2034. 2034 will be the last year where you can purchase them. There will be a massive surge of prices because that will be the last year where you can purchase the internal combustion engine. If you still own a petrol diesel hybrid at 2035, what that will mean is that you can still drive the vehicle, own the vehicle, however, there will be restrictions in place where you can and cannot drive. Although the future is not so bleak, the government are planning to subsidise businesses and consumers of electric and hydrogen vehicles. They are currently thinking of a plan where they can provide reduced costs for consumers as time goes on and introduce more charging points so we can charge our vehicles a lot more efficiently. Watch this space guys because the future is electrifying. <laughs> so that's all folks so today we learned about how diesel engines work the difference between petrol and diesel engines, what compression ratios are, and what life looks like for you beyond 2035. Boy, that was a jam-packed video, so I want you to stick around and stay tuned for my next video because you don't want to miss out on this pretty little thing.